Today I will go over all the steps it takes to create a bubble in Adobe Fresco. To start, you have to create a blank document. I'm going to start with an 8x10. Uh, the size is not as important because we will be copying them and adding them into a separate photo. To get started, we're actually going to create a circle using our selection tool. It is um, right below the move tool. We're just going to select the circle and then draw on the surface. Okay, from here, I'm actually going to fill it in with a dark blue color. So I'm going to find a nice dark blue. I'm going to fill it in with a pixel layer. And then I'm actually going to shape it a little bit better because it kind of looked like an oval. And then once I like the shape and the color, I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer. I'm going to keep the circle selected. I'm not going to deselect it. And this time I'm going to change it to white. After I change it to white, I'm going to refill my color with the pixel layer. But this is going to be above my blue layer. So I could still see my blue through when I erase it. I'm going to set my eraser. So I want a pretty big size, but I want a low, a lower um, transparency. So I'm at flow 28. And then the brush that I'm going to use is going to be this soft round opacity brush. And I'm going to start in the center. I'm just kind of making a circle with my brush. And I'm going to go all the way out to the edge. And I'm going to keep going so that there's a nice soft edge. And then when I think it looks good, I'm actually going to make it a little stronger. And I'm going to kind of do the center a little bit more. So the center is going to be the darkest. And then it's going to fade to the light as we go. Okay. Once I like it, I'm going to create a new layer. So we're going to create a new layer a bunch of times. This time, I'm going to add color. I'm going to add it with my pixel brush. And the painting option is going to be the brush that I use. I can go between any of these brushes and painting, see which one I like better. Um, I think what the one I used for my example was the canvas brush. So I'm going to just go ahead, did that in the wrong color. I'm going to choose my colors now. So I'm going to do orange. And I'm just placing them randomly. I'm going to do like a little bit of red, not too much. I'm going to go down the wheel. I'm going to do some pink. Maybe I'll put the pink in between. Maybe I'll do like a brighter pink as well. And these are just random placements of color. I'm going to do some green. And blue. This is going to be a light blue. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my eraser tool. I'm going to make sure it's set correctly, soft brush, low flow, medium size, and I'm going to erase the color this time. So it's just going to be tints. I can repeat that step as many times as I want. So maybe this time I want to only do green colors. So I created a new layer. I go back to the pixel brush. I add my green colors. And then I erase them so that they look like they blend better. I could do that again with another color. So I can add again. This time I'll do my orange color. I'm going to add orange. And then I'm going to erase the areas that I either that I think I did too strong or maybe I did it too big. 
And I can just keep on going, do that again. Maybe this time I'm gonna make a new layer and do pink. Bring some of my pink back. And then erase. So this is all just giving it a little bit of dimension, some colors. Um, and you can do that as many times as you need. The last time I do it, I'm going to do it again in white. And this time, I'm going to use more of a textured brush. So maybe this time I'll use the Cezanne brush. And I'll bring the size down. And I'm going to make those little marks that you would see in a bubble. And I'm also going to soften it with my eraser tool. And I can repeat that step also as many times as I need to. So maybe I want one of them to look really solid. So find the right brush that you like. That's too big. I don't like the texture in that one. So I'll try this one. It's a little better. And then erase what you need. then let's say I like the way it looks. I'm going to merge all of my layers together. So I'm going to keep merging down. So I'm going to just go to the three dots on the side and press merge down. I'm going to do that as many times as I need until all of them are on one layer. From here, I'm going to press my three dots and I'm going to press copy selection. So what it did is it copied my bubble. So now all I have to do is go to my crab that I drew and then I go to the three dots and I press paste selection and my bubble shows up and I could rotate it I can move it so this one is much more colorful than my other ones that I drew I do like it um, I'm just gonna make it a little smaller and I can add this as many times as I want so once I like the location I could actually just go to the three dots and press duplicate layer and what that's going to allow me to do is just keep dragging them out and making them various sizes. So maybe these will go in front of some of my other bubbles. And I can do that as many times as I want. Um, there's no limit to how many times you can do that. Maybe I'll put a real big one over here. And that's it. So once I'm done... Let's say I like the way it looks, I'm final. I did my highlights and my seaweed. I like my crab, I like the background, I like my bubbles. Um, I could go ahead and go to publish and export. And export as a JPEG and high quality. And then I go to export, save image. Once it's saved, I can go and look at it in my photos. And then what I did with mine was I just cropped out the red. So I went to edit, crop. You may or may not even have a border that you need to crop. So if you don't have one, that's good. So I'm just cropping out my border. And then I'm finished. So good luck finishing. That is the last step. Um, to our character. Make sure you add bubbles. Uh, I will be grading looking at your use of bubbles.